Good morning, my name is Alexander Lansky from Yale University. It's my pleasure to be here this morning with Dr. Andre Lamy from um, McMaster University in uh, Ontario. We're going to be discussing your late-breaking trial uh, on or off-pump coronary bypass surgery. So I'm going to ask you to give us a little bit of background in terms of the significance of your trial, the trial design, and, uh, and then we can go into some of the results. And well, thank you for there. having me this morning. Well, coronary is a large uh, cardiac surgery trial. Uh, we recruited 4,752 patients, and uh, we're comparing off-pump uh, cabbage surgery to on-pump cabbage surgery. Uh, and, you know, in the literature, there's a many small randomized trial um, that had few events or a short follow-up. Even meta-analysis actually have marginal benefit for stroke, but no other benefits for other major cardiovascular events. And uh, we started recruiting patients in 2006, so a few years before Ruby came out. And despite Ruby, we'll review our data and carry on to finish our uh, recruitment a few months ago. The uh, primary outcome, uh, it's, we have two co-primary outcomes. The first one is at 30 days, and the second one is at five days. So we're now um, reporting the results at 30 days, but the follow-up is still ongoing, and well, we hope to come back in four years to give you a final follow-up. The uh, first co-primary outcome is uh, death, total death. Uh, non-fatal MI, stroke, and uh, renal failure requiring dialysis at 30 days. And so what is the take-home message? Well, is it on pump or off pump? <laughs> the take-home message is off, there's no difference at 30 days between off pump and on pump in the first, uh, the, the cool primary uh, outcome. Uh, we found that off pump has um, less bleeding, less blood mm -hmm. transfusion, and certainly uh, less reoperation for bleeding. Also, there's less uh, respiratory infection. Uh, the time in the ICU seems to be shorter as well. Uh, however, there are more uh, revascularization with off pump. Mm, interesting. How about neurologic evaluation? Uh, that's part of uh, our uh, outcomes to be measured. However, um, the quality of life, the neurocardiac function, and the economic analysis are still uh, being analyzed. So. Mm -hmm. We'll have to finish the analysis before we can uh, report the results, which should be done in about six months. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm uh, actually quite interested in, in, in the, uh, the neurocognitive evaluation, etc. What kind of tools do you use to, uh, to evaluate your patients, both um, in the short term and long term? Well, we're doing a, a five tests, well, five times. So we're doing three tests, uh, the MOCA, which is, um, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, a newer version, what well, is incorrect, it's a, the kind of a, cognitive assessment tool. That's right, uh, which is a little better than Minimental. And we're doing the uh, DSS and the trail making. So these are the three tools, plus the uh, European quality of life, which is kind of a standard quality of life tool. So we're doing that before surgery, after surgery, uh, at discharge, uh, one month, and at five years. So we'll have the results at 30 days fairly soon, uh, but of course we'll do that up to five years. That could be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so this may be one of the more systematic evaluation of neurocognitive function following surgery. That's right. I think I don't, so. I'm not quite f aware of any other study that's done this um, out to five years. Uh, no, Ruby has the longest one. Yeah. It was uh, one year. Yeah. We have different tools that they used, uh, but we're going up to five years. And we have about 2,000 patients mm -hmm. for neurocognitive assessment. So that's a good sample size for that. So based on your 30-day uh, results, are there any any uh, recommendations you want to make to your colleagues at well, this point? Well, as the surgeons and the cardiovascular community say that both techniques are, are safe and with experienced surgeons because the, the surgeon that in the trial were quite experienced. Mm -hmm. They had to be at least two years in the practice and have done more than 100 procedure of one specific technique to be allowed to do that technique. And most surgeons actually had hundreds of uh, procedures done in both techniques, a very group of very experienced surgeons. Mm -hmm. So in their hands, the results are comparable. Um, you may want to adjust your practice, your practice according to your patient. Mm -hmm. Not all the patients are the same. Right. And I think a wise surgeon will uh, use both tools effectively and decide which patient will go better one way or the other. Great, well I want to thank you for taking the time to come and speak to us today. Thank and that concludes much. our interview.